सहना सहनो भुन सह वीर कर्वाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुम विदिषावह ओ शांति 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 ओ पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओ शांति 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 श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम चैतन्यं सर्वगम सर्व सर्वूतगुहाशय यत्षयातीत तस्म सर्वे नम बुद्ध्यादीना अनात्म हेयो पादेपत बुद्ध्यादीना बुद्धि आदि ये ऑल दी दिस उपाधि बीनिंग फिथ बुद्धि मन प्राण इंद्रिया देह Somebody is telephone. Uh, you please shut off all your phones. Don't keep on the vibrator or any other mode. Must completely shut off. Hey, yo, paade rupa tha. Because they are available for to or subject to hey ya, upade ya. Anything that can be given up or acquired has to be different from oneself. Then only I can give up or acquire. Hanu pada na karta atma, atma ne dar hain dik karta. The basis for hana and upada na. Not that there is kartrutu in atma, but still you can say it is in presence of atma that the hanam, upadanam, giving up, acquiring takes place. Not tyajyo, not chakrishya. It's my very self, and therefore, so that's the definition of self. You can say anya devata dvijata at aso avijata dadhi, or not tyajya, not chakrishya. So that's the way to contemplate upon myself. That who am I? The one that cannot be given up, one cannot be acquired with the idea of giving up. Acquiring are totally gone. What remains is myself. <coughs> so the self is there in my awareness, but in that also some element is there which can be given up or which can be acquired. The anatma is, you know, mixed up with that. सवाख्याभ्यंतरे शुद्धे प्रज्ञानकसे घने बाह्यमाभ्यर चान्यत कथम हेय प्रकल्य से सुभाख्याभ्यंतरे शुद्धे सैव दट ईज सैमलटेनियली बाह्यणाभ्यर विच ईज एक्सटीरियर एज वेल एज इंटीरियर 
meaning that which is divided the idea of the exterior and interior. Just as you say, the space is divided the idea of exterior and interior. Only with reference to part or the enclosure, the idea of exterior and interior comes. Space itself has no exterior, no interior. The world talk of self, the consciousness. <coughs> Shuddhi prajnana ikara se ghane. Ever pure of the nature of pure awareness. So dense or mass awareness, meaning awareness, admitting of nothing else. Bhashyam abhyantram chanyat katham heyam prakalpyade. So when you are totally absorbed in the consciousness of self, this prajnana ghana, how can there be an idea of exterior and interior in that? Now how can there be an idea of then giving up something or acquiring something? <coughs> so atma neti neti ti parapohe na sheshitaha sajit brahma vidatmeshto yate yatah Yate tata param kasam. How is that Atma communicated to us? Neti neti di para apohe na sheshidaha. With Atma being self revealing, I am always aware of that. But I am also aware of the Anatma which also is revealed by Atma. Anatma is not self-shining. So nature and with the Atma gets revealed. Or the manner in which the Anatma gets attracted to different. They are in their different locations. But that Difference or separatedness is not recognized habitually. So the Shruti wants us to see that. There is an Atma also, an Atma also seems to shine, but understand that it does not shine on its own. This illumines. So two entities, illuminator and illumined, are simultaneously, I am aware of the two. I should recognize that the I am illuminator and then illumine that difference I have to see. To help me that see the difference is neti neti, that illumine. What is illumine? What is sarva vishayat? Sarva vishayat, what vishaya is negated. <coughs> para apohena sheshitaha, para apohena, by apoha. By giving up what is para, what is other. So whatever can be given up which has an otherness when everything is then seshita. What remains which cannot be given, which doesn't have paratvam, the otherness. Sahatma. Such is Brahma Vidatma is Brahma Vida Saatma Ishto Chait. If Brahma Vida knows that as Atma, that I am the one that is Neti Para Apohena Sheshitoham, in me, in me there is nothing Para, nothing other. There is nothing to be given up, nothing to be acquired, then what is the scope of any, act any action always takes place either for giving up or acquiring? Atah Param Kasam Yadeda. How can this wise person then can strive for giving up something or acquiring something? Because then Atma is recognized as non-dual and all that is the self. First you give up what is not self and recognize that as self only. In non-dual how can there be something to give up or acquire? <coughs> Now continuing page 199, verse 12. Evam vidam atma tattvam na paranabhogam yamiti. 
the atma tattva of this nature is not para anubhogamyam is not something that is to be experienced by someone else i am not subject to being experienced by another one swayam eva atma veda vivektavyam Someone cannot describe how you are Swamiji. What they can describe is not I, is this Upadhi. They can describe the body, they can even describe my mind, depending upon what their perception, they can describe, but they can never describe or experience the I. In other words, it is I who have to experience myself or know myself. Even with him Atma, the even with him Atma Tattva, the Atma Tattva which is not subject to Hayatva, Upadhyatva, which is very my very self. Someone can experience in me that aspect that is given, that available for giving up or acquiring. So whatever experience is subject to Hayatva and Upadhyatva. because whatever is experienced has to be different from me or experience is different from experienced but here is something which is not here am no pare am so nobody can experience it swayam eva atmida shastra acharya upadesha anusara vivektavyam is not that you to create an experience of atma We have to create an experience of the witness. Vivektavyam, the experience of the witness which is already there. That witness has to be seen as separate from what is witnessed. And that is what one has to do oneself. The Shastra and Acharya tell us, What is an Atma? What is Atma and Atma, the Lakshana, the characters of both are told to us. The help of those Lakshana, you know, hey, this is an Atma, an Atma, an Atma, I am not that, I am not that. We are told also. Asthulam, Ananu, Ashaswam, Adirgam. So what is an Atma also is being described. यत्त अद्रेशम अग्राह्यम अगोत्रम अवर्णम अचक्षु श्रोत्रम तदपाणि पादम सो विवेकतव्यम व्हाट इज टू बी डन इज फ्रॉम द एक्सपीरियंस दैट आई ऑलरेडी हैव दिस आई हैव जस्ट लेट गो व्हाट आई हैव आई मिस्टेकनली बिलीव इज माय सेल्फ दैट इज टू बी लेट गो नॉट दैट विटनेस ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस टू समथिंग इज ऑलरेडी माय विटनेस always experience myself i am the nature of experience so viveka is recognition in that i what is the anatma part so what is the anatma the next verse is 12th verse what is atma asanaya adyati krantam ब्रह्मेवास्मिन्निरंतरं deliberated upon the self correctly in this manner kasam aham karyavan syam how can there be karma in me how can i perform an action when there is no vishesha or any attribute in me including of course kartrutvam because i transcend all the visheshas 
वशनायादिक्रांत ब्रह्म ये वशनाया विपास है शोक मोहम जरा मृत्यु अत्यधी सत्य आत्मा सर्वांतर है जस्ट इंद्र मोस्ट सेल्फ सो वशनाया विपास है हंगर एंड थर्स्ट शोक मोहम द ग्रीफ एंड डिल्यूजन जरा मृत्यु ओल्ड एज एंड डेथ ऑल ऑफ दिस ऑल बिलोंग्स टू एन आत्मा सो अपो है इट्स टेकिंग प्लेस So I am that I am the one who is devoid of all this. So I am always there from that. So question is to give up something. Not that atma is to be acquired or experienced. Anatma is to be recognized and given up. Recognize that anatma and give up the identification. Brahma yavas me nirantam. Always I am that Brahman. Not that I have to become Brahman. Always I am self-shining. That Kadhivan I become. When Asaya, Pipasa, etc. are all mixed up in me, and therefore I look upon myself Asnaya, Asnaya, Asnaya Van, Pipasa Van. Muroham. शोक ग्रस्तो हम देन इमीडिएटली कर्मा कम्स बिकॉज़ व्हेन आई एम ग्रीविंग व्हेन आई एम डिल्यूडेड व्हेन आई एम हंग्री व्हेन आई एम थर्स्टी व्हेन आई एम डाइंग व्हेन आई एम गेटिंग ओल्ड दिस आइडियाज़ अबाउट आई इमीडिएटली प्रॉम्प्ट मी टू डू समथिंग टू बिकम फ्री फ्रॉम दैट कंक्लूजन of limitedness smallness suffering helplessness it is not the hunger and thirst etc cause this is i am hungry i am thirsty that is what causes it so wise person also hunger and thirst old age and death they always remain they are not going to go away It is judging myself based on those, looking at myself through that eye, eye of hunger and thirst, and judging myself hungry and thirsty. When this shadur me rahitam, Brahma hamasmi, then when I am not hungry, then nothing is to be done. Not thirsty, nothing is to be done. I am not deluded. Nothing is to be done. I am not grieving. Nothing is to be done. I am not dying. I am not getting old. When I become completely free from these ideas, then the need to do anything itself disappears. Need to do something was only contrived. Was only a notion. You know, born of a wrong notion. And thus, the wise person becomes free from all the needs. Karyavan, Syam, Kasan, Chaham. How can I then become active? Evam anjasa bhushe. This is how one should contemplate upon oneself. This is the Shastra Acharya Upadesha Anusar. The previous verse said that. Shastra the earlier said so. Even Bhimar said, "Praptam prapaniya meri kate buddhi evana bhavet." So when I deliberate upon myself in this manner, that I transcend all the samsara dharma. That Brahman non-dual consciousness I am. Praptam, prapaniyam. Something to be acquired. The idea of something to be achieved or acquiring doesn't remain there. This ultimately is nothing other than myself anyway. 
even though the atma is separate from anatma not that anatma is separate from atma so atma includes all anatma and so apta kama atma kama when everything recognizes atma then apta kama all your kamnas are already fulfilled because you find yourself that then prapaniya when there is nothing to be acquired kartavya buddhi eva nam na bhavet then this notion something is to be done that doesn't arise something needs to be done when there is something to be added into me or subtracted from me when i do not want something in me when something is uncomfortable i should get rid of it or without something i am uncomfortable then i should get it If I'm comfortable with myself in every way, then the question of giving up, acquiring doesn't arise. It is dushtantena. By dushtant, the illustration, the teacher shows how the idea of achieving something does not remain. In the next verse, Paragastuyathanadhyaha क्वेश्चन पारग वन वेज क्रॉस पारग पारम गति पारम गन वेज अटेन द पारम इन दर बैंक तारम या सती नाउ डजी या सती अगेन डिजायर टू क्रॉस द रिवर वन इज क्रॉस द रिवर एंड रीज दर बैंक what about i mean would there be a question of now crossing the river again any more on his part no that i crossed it atma agnyas chet tatha kayam similarly also atma agnya is the one who has crossed the river and therefore kasam chet kartam anya dehe ichchadi how can there be in him the desire to do something सो टीका से नद्या पारम परती गारम गारग सो नद्या पारग नद्या पारम गरती गुजन रीच दि अदर बैंक ऑफ द रिवर तत्थीरम सो परतीरस्थ so now he is on the other bank of the river tame uparam yasadi yatam pradam ichchadi does he now any more desire to reach that bank which is already reached chit in case a person who reached the other bank still desires to reach the bank तेन तथा यथोक्तात्म अन्यत कार्यम कर्तुम इच्छेद यह इच्छति देन ओनली द वन हु अटेन द ने हु अबाइडिंग इन नेचर ऑफ द सेल्फ वाइडिंग इन द सेल्फ वुड वांट टू डू समथिंग बिकॉज़ ही इज ऑलरेडी अटेन द सेल्फ पूर्णत्व सो व्हेन देयर इज स्लोडो सेंस ऑफ फुलफिलमेंट एंड अकाउंट ऑफ अचीव नोइंग द सेल्फ दैट्स ऑल दैट यू नीड टू डू Knowing the self by eliminating non-self—that's what is to be done. Even self also is known; has to be correctly known. So, yaya sati, yaya means to go. Neva yaya sati, neva ichcha di ichcha itya tha. Either way. So, does he want to now cross that river anymore? Does he desire? So, in case of the uh, person crossing the river, does he desire to cross the river? 
In case of Atma Jnana, knowledge, the knower of the self, does he desire anything to acquire something? Nivayasati, Nivachati Chaityasaha. So, Karivan, Sam Kasam Chaham. How can I be Karivan? How can I be active, performing any action? Inasmuch as action is a means of achieving something not achieved. Action can be for prapti, utpatti, prapti, samskriti, vikriti. Create something that is not there, reach somewhere where you are not. Clear some, clean something, create something. With all these there, none of these activities can remain for the wise person. But suppose you find someone, yah punah atma gnyo bhi karyavan syat. He is atma gnyo. He is the knower of the self. Karyavan syat. And still has a need to do something. It is not that the wise person is doing something. But a wise person sees a need to do something. Sanat Samyak Darshidi, then he does not have the true knowledge or knowledge of the true nature of the self he doesn't have. Tam Nindati and such a person who desires still, who needs to do something. Now, doing something is, is, you know, that need not be dismissed because a person has to live the life. Only if you remain in the cave, you know, and then stone, that's a different matter, but otherwise, so you see the person doing things. It's not that you see the person. It's a question of the person needs to do something. Even there's something is not a problem. Is there a need to do something? Our problem is need and not anything else. Doing is not the problem. Doing doesn't bind you. The need binds you. Or Need is an expression of bondage. That's what it is. Tam nindati, this person is now condemned here by the teacher, Atma Gnisya Piri. So next verse is, Atma Gnisya Piyasyasyat Hanu Padana Tayadi No Mokshar Hassa Vignaya No Mokshar Hassa Vignaya Vanto so Brahmana Druam Atma Gnisya Vyasya For the one who is Atma Gnya, one who is a knower of the self, so knower of everything. When you know the self, you know everything also because what is his self? That's not the question, that is not the point here. But when everything is served, then everything is acquired. You become everything. Tasmat tat saram abhavat. But knowing the true nature of myself, I see that all that is is I. All that is the Atma, and that is become everything. Nothing remains apart from Him to achieve, to be acquired. Yah punaha atma gnabi karyavan syad. Here the whole context is hanam upadanam. That the knowledge of the self makes you free from the need of acquiring or rejecting. So in the wake of the self knowledge, nothing remains to be acquired because everything is acquired. Nothing remains to be rejected because there is nothing to be rejected. And so what prompts the action is a need either to reject or acquire. If an action is performed with a need to reject something or acquire something, reject something because I am uncomfortable with that. 
acquire something because I'm uncomfortable without that. So if the ideas of giving up and acquiring are result of a self-discomfort, that means then, then he has not known the self. Because self-knowledge naturally creates a total sense of satisfaction. So, Kruta Krutyatvat, Krutam Krutyam, Praptam Prapaniyam. And therefore the mind is completely relaxed. It is relaxed with what is. Relax with what I am and therefore relax with what is. Nothing creates any reaction in him. Nothing creates any discomfort in him. When you are comfortable with yourself, you are comfortable with what is. That is what the self-knowledge does. Because that's how the self or Atma is. And so this person is in the, the Ninda. The condemnation is there just to praise the Atma Gnya, understand? The purpose of Ninda is not in Ninda. It is to draw attention to something else that as long as you find there is need in you, understand that still you are not an Atmagnya. Because need, you are still seeing yourself as a needy being. That means that you are not seeing yourself as you are, understand this. When you find yourself, you see yourself as free from all the needs, then you are really seeing yourself. <coughs> Atma Gnasya Vyasya Hanu Padanatayadi Hanam Upadanam Still that see there is a need of giving up something, acquiring something. Na moksha rahasa vignaha he should no, be known not as fit for moksha, meaning he has not attained moksha. Vanto so Brahmana Dhruvam Vantaha Meaning that, so he has been rejected. So Brahman doesn't, Brahman throws him away. To throw up is called Vantam. So he wants to become one with Brahman, Brahman throws him away. Because he has still in his mind the need to acquire or give up. So that need is there, that Brahman doesn't accept it. In a way, so Brahman rejects him. Brahman throws him up. That means that he cannot gain. He cannot gain identification with Brahman as long as he looks upon himself as a needy person, need to acquire something, give up something. So long, he cannot recognize oneness with Brahman. <coughs> In Ninda also, the intention is to. Clarify the nature of self and nature of self knowledge. The next one says Anagatam to ye purvam, Anakshatram to Pashimam, Sanjam no pasa vipraha, tekatam, Brahmanaha smutaha, now Brahmanaha. So Brahmanaha. Gargi was told by Agni Valkya that one who departs from this body with the knowledge of Brahman, he is so Brahma Jana the Brahmana. So there Brahmana was described one who has the knowledge of Brahman. But Brahmana can be also Jati. So here is a verse taken from the Dharma Shastra, Smriti Ganta. Sandhyam na upasate. One who does not perform the prayer or the worship at the time of Sandhya, called Sandhya Vandanam. 
at least two sandhya vandanams have to be done if not three there are two mentioned here anagatam to ye purvam first sandhya is before the sunrise anakshatram to pashyamam pashyam second sandhya is time before the nakshatras appear in the sky the constellation before the night in fact before sunrise and before sunset the two sandhyas are to be performed in between there is one when there is midday that is but at least these two no upasate the one who does not perform these two sandhyas katham te brahmanas how can you call them brahmanas see this question is asked with reference to a wise person karyavan syam katham cha how can i be how can i perform any action atmagnyasya tatha karyam kartum how can there be any kartavya for wise person kartavya something to be done so karma is one thing kartavya is somewhat different doing some but the compulsion to do something kartavya means i have to do something that compulsion how can there be but if you are a brahman then you are supposed to perform this worship twice a day so a brahman will feel compelled to do this otherwise i know that i'm i create an offense i'm i'm violating something and therefore i'm subject to punishment incurring papa so now you call this brahmana then he has to perform this sandhyas the wise person is called brahmana in a primary sense how can you call him and on one hand you say that he sees no need to do anything and then he will not perform the sandhyas then how can he be called brahmana so with that uh, it is smriti this is smriti brahma vidva bhi viprasya so if the brahma gnani also happens to be brahmana by caste question is if a person is brahmana by caste then these are the uh, perform prayers and worship to be done nitya nimitta karma that to be done so whether he is a wise person or otherwise as long as he belongs to brahmana caste then he has to do this <coughs> brahma vidva viprasya sandhya vandanam asti karyam iti is it so or not the brahma gnani happens to be a brahmana and a brahmana is required to perform this prayer so worship and you say that it doesn't do anything then see the need to do anything so kartavya means the need or compulsion to do something and then the wise person becomes free from all compulsion that why you may find him not doing this then does he not create the is in offending this rule it is ashanka kaimutika nyaya nirakaro the so how can even a wise person be expected even someone else also is not expected to do a person is not wise also becomes free from the from the compulsion to do this and then then what do a wise person this is how kyu vaktavya what to talk of so next verse is the 15th verse साधित्यम हि जगत् प्राणः तस्मानाहर्निशैव वा प्राणज्ञस्यापि न स्यादां कुतो ब्रह्मविदो द्वये साधित्यम हि जगत् प्राणः आदित्यन सह सहित साधित्यम सो द जगत द एंटायर जगत इंक्लूडिंग आदित्य और सन इज प्राण कोई हिरण्य गर्व और प्राण 
जो टीका कर विल एक्सप्लेन दैट वन हु इज मेडिटेटिंग अपॉन दिस प्राण हिरण निगर बाय द सेल्फ बिकम्स आइडेंटिफाइड द एंटायर यूनिवर्स इंक्लूडिंग सन दैट आई एम आई एम द सन आई एम हिरण निगर बाय देफ और आई एम द होल जगत देफ और आई एम सन इज वन ऑफ द थिंग्स तस्मान अहर निशा ए बाबा फॉर सन देर इज नो डे एंड नाइट and for the one identified son also is free from idea of day and night pranagnya sabi his group pranagnya pranavit one who meditates upon prana hiranyagarbha and gains identification with that also gains identity with son is one of the part of prana and therefore there is no day and night for that person kuto brahma vidho advaidan for a brahmana brahm For the knower of Brahman, who is Advay, so one who is identified, recognizes himself as non-dual. Even when there is a duality in the knower and known, as far as the prana is concerned, even for that person also there is no day and night. And what to talk of Brahman with who knows himself as non-dual? So this came with the Kanyaya. So. सो कि वेत कि वक्तव्य वाट टू टॉक अब ब्रह्म वेद स कूत है द टीकाकार से साम सा जगत प्राण है तस् सूर्य तत्सहित इदम जगत सादित्यम आदित्य सहित जगत सर्वम ही यस्मात सो सादित्यम ही जगत तस् जगत प्राण है ही यस्मात सिंस दी जगत इन इंक्लूडिंग आदित्य इज प्राण हिरण्य गर्व इंक्लूड एवरीथिंग प्राण हिरण्य गर्व तस्मात नेक्स्ट है प्राणज्ञासी प्राणज्ञ सी न सैता सिंस प्राण हिरण्य गर्व इंक्लूड होल यूनिवर्स इंक्लूडिंग इज वन विथ होल यूनिवर्स इंक्लूडिंग आदित्य तस्मा प्राणज्ञ सी सो वन हु मेडिटेट ऑन प्राण दिस अहंग्रह उपासना प्राणोहम हिरण्य गर्वोहम एंड वन हु दस एक्वायर्स आइडेंटिटी विथ प्राण प्राणमस्मी प्राणात्म आपन्न से दीज आर वेरी एक्सॉल्टेड मेडिटेशन बट सपोज सच ए पर्सन इज दैर सो दीज आर द कैंड ऑफ मेडिटेशन दैट आर प्रिस्क्राइब इन द उपनिषद इन द वेदा प्राणमस्मी आई एम प्राण यदि प्राणात्म आपन्न से दून इज अठेन आपन्न अठेन दि भाव द आइडेंटिटी विथ प्राण धराम प्राण आई हिरण्य गर्भ उपासक से प्राणज्ञ उपासक हियर ज्ञ और द नॉलेज इज उपासना आई मीन रेकग्नाइजिंग आइडेंटिफिक आइडेंटिटी विथ प्राण इज कॉल द प्राणज्ञ अहर निशाय नश्चाता Even for this upasaka of prana also, because this one with aditya, therefore there is no in aditya there is no aharnisha, and so even for this upasaka there is no aharnisha. Udaya astama yahita surya rupa tvat tasya horate nasya dhami tyarda. Because this meditator or worshipper has the ten identity with aditya. Who is devoid of rising and setting? Aditya doesn't rise and doesn't set. For a person on the earth, the sun rises and sets. For Aditya, there is no rising and no setting. When Aditya or sun goes on the other side of the earth, we call we say it is set, and when it comes this side, we is rising. So that is for the reference to earth for the person on the earth, different from Aditya. So rising and setting of Aditya, or day and night, are for someone who is away from sun. But for sun, 
There is no rising, no setting, no night, therefore no day. Say so day also is in contrast to night. Aditya nature of light, there cannot be any night, darkness, and therefore there is no day also, relative to night. Tathacha Shruti from Chandogya the Vakya is quoted. How do you say there is no day and night in Aditya? Nahavasma udeti na nimlochati sakrut divahasmai bhavati iti. Nahavai asmai. For this Upasaka Sadaka, na udeti na nimlochati. The sun does not rise, the sun does not set. Sakrut divahaya vasmai bhavati. For him, there is day all the time. Light all the time. For the Upasaka. And therefore, even for the Upasaka also, there is no notion of day and night because she is identified with the sun, which is part of Hiranyagarbha. Tathaja Pradagnasyapi, the second line of the verse, Pradagnasi Manasyatam, Ahar Nishava. Pranagnasi, Pramidopi, Bhedashina. So this is not ident so he is identified with Prana. So that identification involves duality anyway. Bheda Sahishnu Abheda is called Tadatmya. So Upasana one attains Tadatmya. So that Sukshma Bheda remains between Upasak and Upasya. And therefore, Bheda Darshana, and therefore, that Bheda Darshanam is still there in a sukshma, a subtle level. Idi Ahar Nasyatam, even for the one who still looks upon ah, the Hiranyagarbha, when the subtle difference is there between Upasaka and Upasya, even for him also, the day and night are not there for the Bheda Darshan. Tadasya Brahma Veda, Mukhya Brahma Bhutasya, Brahma, Brahma Veda, Brahma Yavhavati. So, by virtue of knowledge of Brahma, known as become Brahma. Sarvadvita Abhasayate Swarupe. And there is no Abhasa at all, even appearance of any duality, is totally non dual. One has Tadatma and therefore apparent non duality, but here non dual in primary sense. Kutasyata, for Noor of Brahma, how can there be day and night? Where everything is Him, and therefore day and night also are nothing but Him, there is no, nothing separate from Him. Na kutopi di kala bheda darshan abhavat. When kala bheda, the morning, evening, so this is the bheda or the difference in time. Time is one. But morning is different, noon is different, evening is different, night is different. So time also is in this manner differentiated. That's called bha. So we see the differentiation in time that now it is night, now it's morning. One is identified with Kala or transcended Kala. For that person, there is no day and night and morning and evening. So if there is no morning and evening, how can there be prayer connected with morning and evening? If the duty is connected with morning and evening, the duty falls upon one who recognizes morning and evening. But he recognizes only Brahman. So morning also is Brahman, evening also is Brahman. Therefore, that Bheda or the separatedness of the time is not recognized because it's all seen as Brahman. Kala Bheda, Dasana Bhadevata, Nimitta Karta Vyabha. If you see the difference in time, see morning as different from evening, then you must do something in the morning and the evening because then morning requires you to do something, evening requires you to do something, respond in a certain way. You need to respond to something the way you perceive it. 
But still this person has mother, you have to respond in one way. Father, another way. Son, another way. Guru, another way. So what is called Kartavya is the right way of relating to the one that you experience. And therefore the karta, I look upon myself as Brahmana, therefore Kartavya comes. That Grostom, then a Kartavya comes. But for whom everything is turned into Brahman? Sort of Atma Yavabhuta. No distinction remains now between myself and day and night or anything and then there is nothing to be done. Because then there is no impulse to respond in a certain way because I don't see father, I see Brahman and mother. All of these are there in form. But the content of all of them is Brahman, understand? So even if you see the form, you recognize Brahman in that form. The self in that form. In that case then, what response you can give to yourself? Therefore the compulsion responding in a certain way goes away when the right perception comes. So, my duty or it is appropriate for me to respond in a certain way depending upon how I perceive things. I perceive this as my country, then there is one response. I perceive that just as land, you know. So, people have perception of their own and that's how they feel compelled to do something. People felt compelled. I have to do something. This is an injustice. I must jump my, you know, and therefore I must do something. <coughs> so, the kartavya or the impulse to do something arises based on my perception of Myself and what I relate to. When I am Brahman, everything that I perceive also is Brahman. Then there is no impulse at all. And therefore there is no compulsion, there is no kartavya. Then nimitta kartavya bhava hai rei. So kartavya, the compulsion to do something, arises from how I relate and that arises from how I perceive, that arises from how I perceive myself. How I perceive myself, that's how I perceive others, that's how then I relate, and that's how I, I, I respond. All of this is not there for the wise person. <coughs> Brahma Vido Bhashya Kriya Abhave See, the thing is there are various statements in various places and they they reconcile all here. Here you are making a strong point that for Brahma Jnani there is no Kartavya and thing is to be done. But what about this statement in this Mudhi? What about this statement in this text? So when the statement is now quoted, Brahma Vidaha, Bhashya Kriya, all right now he doesn't see the day and night. Therefore, no external activity is required because he does not perceive those things as day and night and divisions he doesn't see. Therefore, he doesn't have to react or respond to the external world. Bhashya Kriya Abhavevi So, Sandhya etc. Sandhya Vandana is Bhashya Kriya. Because you see the Bhashya external world in a certain way. Now, it, that is not so. Sandhyam Samadhu Atmani Achare Iri Shrutehe. The Aroni Upanishad is there. In that, this statement occurs. Sandhyam Samadhu Atmani Achare. Sandhyam or Sandhim, meaning at the time of Sandhya. Sandhya Ka, when that is the merger, you know, of the day and night or night, you know or night and day. Samadhu Atmani Achare When the sannyasi should become Samadhista, he should get self-absorbed and must Atmani Achare must, you know, remember Paramatma 
to dwell upon Paramatma. So in Arun Upanishad, while describing the duties of a sannyasi, sannyasi also at the time of Sandhya should completely withdraw his attention upon then, focus upon himself and he must remember the self, remember everything else. So Swatmani Vismrutim Parityanya. Do not forget yourself. Mokshaya Smriti Kartavya Smriti Kartavya Atma Smriti Kartavya The sannyasi also should constantly remember the self for the purpose of moksha. Should not forget, meaning that he should not get distracted. What is forgetting self is getting distracted to things. And as long as doing vyavahara, distraction will be there. There was samadhi. Therefore, this, this sannyasi or mumuksha, he should deliberately withdraw his attention from everything else and get absorbed in the self and then retain the remembrance of the self. That's the duty that is being told. So even though externally he doesn't do something, internally he should do something. Iti bhashya kriya bhavayabhi swatmani. Internally, some kriya of this kind of meditation has to be is prescribed even for a sannyasi also. So when you say that wise person doesn't have to do anything, how about this one here? In response to the verse 16 is there. Nasmaratyatmano hyatman Vismaren vapya lupta chita Mano pismarati tetata Gnana magnana he to yam. Now, difference between a seeker and a wise person. For a seeker, he has to remember the Atma and uh, you know, maintain this thought flow in his mind so that the mind doesn't get distracted. So, anatma samskaras have to be, be, he has to become free from the anatma samskaras and create samskara of the atma. So, that is to be done, no doubt, but then wise person has gone through this. He abides in the self. So, now when you abide in yourself, there is no question of remembering it because you become the self. So no question, you are what you are there. You don't remember yourself, nor can you forget yourself. So a wise person does not forget himself because he is a self. And there the question of remembrance also does not come. This remembrance is one for the one who forgets. So when my mind gets preoccupied with other things, then I forget myself as though. Then I must remember, oh, I am so and so. The Nididhyasana also would be required that the beggar has become a rich person but he forgets and again goes back to his old rat. I am a beggar. They must remember, remind himself, I am a rich man. And therefore, this remembrance of a self becomes necessary when habitually there is an identification of non-self. Then you as though forget yourself. So when self-forgetting is there, the self-remembrance has a scope. Who no, abides in the self? You can't forget yourself. You can't get away from yourself. Therefore, there is no question of remembering yourself. So, this is how wisdom is described here. The state of the wise person is described in all these different contexts. Nasmarati Atmano Atma. So, the Tika says, Smarati Yoga Shashti Dviti Arthe. Smarati is Dviti Arthe. Atmana means Atmana Smarati, Atmanam Smarati. Na Smarati Atmanam, that's how it should have been said. He does not remember Atma. Atma, Atmanam Na Smarati, Atma doesn't remember the Atma. Vismaredva or Atma, Atma, Vismaredva. Nor does he forget himself. Why? Aluptachit. 
because he is, his consciousness, which does not suffer cessation, his ever shining consciousness, that being the case, ever, how can that consciousness go away for you to forget or it can appear for you to remember? When you abide in your own nature as this non ceasing consciousness that you are, the question of remembering consciousness, remembering consciousness, if consciousness you be aware of consciousness by remembering, then you can forget it. But you are consciousness. So that is what Tattika says. Smarana vismarana yoho abhave hetu hu. There is no vismaranam, therefore there is no smaranam. Why? Alupta chit iti. Because he is a chit or consciousness. Alupta it does not suffer his decision. Ever shining consciousness. Ever remembered consciousness. Never forgotten consciousness, sort of. In the Shakyatvat Atmana Swasmaranam Vedatum Na Yuktam. Swasmaranam Swarahita Patha. Because it is, because I am the very unceasing consciousness, therefore, the question of remembering I or consciousness does not arise. And therefore, there is. It doesn't make sense that you should enjoin or ask him to remember yourself because he is very self. Tari tattva jnana urdhvam avir bhava tiro bhavadi vikara shante maneva atmanam smared. Tattva jnana urdhvam after tattva jnanam avir bhava tiro bhavadi vikara shante. So, the thought appears and thought disappears. <coughs> so, this kind of vikaras take place in the mind. Manayeva atmanam smare. Therefore, the mind should remember the atma. Lest the wise person should not remember, does not need to remember atma because it is atma, but the mind is not. So, the mind may forget and mind may remember. So, the mind should remember the atma. How about that? If the vidhi is yat, so if the vidhi or the injunction is not that atma should remember atma, let the vidhi be the mind should remember atma. Because mind can forget. Avirbhava tirubhava. <coughs> so second line says, Mano pismarati etet gnanam agnyan hetujam. That mind remembers atma or forgets atma is only because of not understanding what the mind is. Manasaha achetanatvat smartutva anupatte hai. Mind doesn't remember. Mind is an instrument of remembering. Mind doesn't forget. To forget is atma that remembers and atma that forgets. <coughs> Not mind. So to say that mind should remember Atma, it doesn't make sense because the mind is a Chaitanam, therefore it doesn't remember or forget. Manasaha achetanatvat smartrutva anupatte hai. Because mind is unconscious, therefore there is no question of the mind remembering because only Chaitan can remember. Manasmartiti jnanam api. So to think that or believe that mind is remembering is ajnana hetujam aviveka vilasitam. In fact, atma alone remembers. But when there is no, we don't recognize distinction of atma and mind, then we may say the mind is remembering. Manas chanchalai, manas krishna, pramati valvadrudam. My mind is like this, my mind is like that. In fact, mind is an instrument. And Atma remembers, Atma forgets, etc. If you want to say that. So there was a Manasmarati Iti Jnanam. Jnanam means this belief or the notion that the mind remembers is also Agnana Hetu. Born of Agnana Hetu. Aviveka Vilasaram. Agnana Hetu. Jam. Agnana the Hetu. Is Aviveka. Aviveka Jam. Is born of awake, not distinguishing Atma from the mind, therefore you think mind thinks. In fact, mind doesn't think, Atma thinks. 
तथा च सम्यक ब्रह्मविद आत्मविधि का मना पश्चात है सो दिस विधान हम इज देयर फॉर असम्यक ब्रह्मविद है फॉर द वन हु इज नॉट नोन ब्रह्मन करेक्टली आत्मविधि का मना पश्चात है एस लॉन्ग एस इज नॉट सीन द नॉन ड्यूअलिटी सो लॉन्ग ही थिंक्स माइंड इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वन सेल्फ देन यू डू से द रिमेम्बर योर सेल्फ डोंट फॉरगेट योर सेल्फ सो दिस संज्ञन समाधो दैट स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम द आर्म उपनिषद इज फॉर ए सीकर संन्यासी हु इज नॉट येट बिकम आत्मज्ञानी हु इज अ प्रोसेस एंड हु स्टिल सीज आत् माइंड इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द सेल्फ फॉर दैट पर्सन दर इज अ नीड इट टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट द माइंड एंड नीड टू एंगेज द माइंड इन रिमेम्बरेंस ऑफ द सेल्फ जिसको असम्यक ब्रह्मविद इज नॉट येट बिकम कंप्लीटली ब्रह्मविद एंड स्टिल सी इज अ माइंड इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द सेल्फ संजन समाधि विधि सो संजम समाधो दट विधि अब समाधि या संध्या राय मिस फॉर दैट पर्सन न सम्यक ब्रह्मविधि भाव है नॉट फॉर द वन हु नोज ब्रह्मन करेक्टली हु डजन सी माइंड एज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम आत्मा हु सीज आत्मा इज एवरीथिंग सो दिस इज हाउ मेनी थिंग्स दैर आर स्टेटेड एल्स फॉर ऑल्सो आर रिकनसाइल हियर After studying these and understanding, you go to that smuti and say, "How about this one? This smuti says this. That text says that." And therefore, the relevant passages are also referred here to reconcile with all of them that there is nothing that contradicts what we are saying here. Otherwise, to a person who is not quite understood properly, he may think that that text con- contradicts this and that one con- so. the apparently contradictory sounding statements are brought here and shown how they do not contradict what is the view from which they arise and how would they be understood with reference to what we are talking here <coughs> okay <coughs> om purnamada purnamid पूर्णात्णमुदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य शाति 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 शंक शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवतन पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मेरी मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणमूर्त नम ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ